but you also have to understand the context of this in the last three years. A lot has happened. The Pacific region has received significant profiling of late, you know, the Solomon Island, uh, the unprecedented uh, support that was given um, with uh, the Hunga Tonga Hunga Hapai volcanic reaction. Um, a lot of interest around the Pacific region from more recently in the last 12 months from China, from Australia, from Japan, from the US, all profiling uh, the Pacific region. Mm. Um, there are big issues with our ocean pollution, yes. disinformation, um, issues around IUU. So all of that context, um, you know, brought to the fore how important the Pacific Island Forum coming together face to face. Right. So you going there, you said the unity in the region is a key concern. Why did you say that? Oh, look, I mean, in the last, uh, I think, 2021, the Micronesian states were unhappy with um, the election of the General Secretary. That's no secret. And so um, it was important, in light of the complexities of a number of interrelated issues, unity is our strength. And when we talk about families, it was important to recognise um, that we needed to um, use our natural talents and our natural strength of coming together as one. Mm. You either come together as a collective or you have to navigate the big powerful nations of the region on your own. Right. And past experiences have shown that it's difficult for small governments to navigate that. The strength of the region is within the Pacific Iron Forum and that institutional structure is how we must engage sure. with external partners. So what is, what is the top issue that's been presented since you've been there? Oh, look, climate change, uh, no doubt. It, um, you know, the Bowie declarations uh, indicated that it was the single greatest threat for the region. And we're not, we're, those are not theory. Those are not on reports. The Pacific are experiencing that right now. And the leadership in the Pacific region has been stellar in the past and is needed now for global immediate action. The one point degree gold, mm. we've seen IPCC reports and how the global community is failing um, if we don't act quickly on that. And so that is still the single most okay. uh, security threat to the region. With a, with a new prime minister in Australia, is there more hope that there's going to be more action from Australia on climate change? Because this was a tension point last time around with uh, Scott Morrison there. We had the uh, one of the ministers um, with us yesterday who conveyed to the forum um, a renewed approach by Australia to climate change and to the region. But there's still a legacy there of uh, the past government that they're going to have to try and win over trust and build good relationships. And I think so far they're, they're, they're on the right track. So uh, Australia is, is doing a lot. Uh, Penny Wong has been into the Pacific a lot. Next week, the leaders from the Pacific are coming over, including Australia and New Zealand. Top of the agenda, though, for them, though, might be that China's influence in the region. I mean, is the Pacific Islands Forum united about China or not? Look, I think what you have to understand, um, the Prime Minister will come next week with Minister Nanaya Mahuta. I'm here on her behalf. What you have to understand is the relationship with China is not new. Um, you've got some countries who are celebrating 40, even 50 years of, of those relationships. So navigating that course with China is not new to the Pacific, but um, there are some significant issues here. The unity of the region, um, the viability of its infrastructure, whether it's fit for purpose yeah. for, for what's happening in the region, yeah. um, a new vision for the future, that's going to be important. And, of course, economic recovery from pandemic. Nanaima Huta was going to be there. She can't. So you're there on her behalf. What was her personal instruction to you? Uh, there were some issues that, that she had um, engaged with leaders and other ministers uh, while she was in Rwanda for the Chogham meeting, and she wanted me to follow up on that, which I have done right. uh, with Solomon Island um, and with Nauru and with the Cook Islands around undersea water mining. She placed a lot of importance on this forum, said that all these negotiations and discussions had to be done there. But how do we as a country not be patronising when we're trying to sort out the Pacific relations with China? 
I think our rhetoric has changed over time. And certainly when you have uh, Nanaia Mahuta, who is herself Indigenous, and she brings to the job those Indigenous values, which the Pacific um, recognise and understand, values of whanaungatanga, values of manakitanga, values of arohatanga. We do all of this work. Mm. You put aside our, our roles as ministers or whatever our roles have, at the end of the day, many of these leaders are my elders. Many of these leaders are my brothers and sisters. And so what underpins our relationship now is that of these strong ties as members of the Pacific region. Are and those, you're seeing Australia using the same rhetoric now. OK. Are those ties strong enough to counter what could be cheap loans and guaranteed infrastructure from other players like China and like the US? They, 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 are, they do underpin our engagement, but nonetheless... You know, the COVID pandemic has really highlighted um, significant challenges for small government nations. Give an example. You have, in some governments, you have two, one or two people who are dealing with, with work that in New Zealand we've got 10 or 20 people dealing with. And so our role here is significant because the Pacific do see us in a different light from other nations. We have probably a far better understanding uh, with people like myself, mm. who has the cultural intelligence here and long-standing relationship, working relationship as well as family relationship, so they can trust okay. that our approach is about the welfare of everyone in the region. And the, the Prime Minister laid particular importance on the Pacific in a speech in Australia this week. In that speech, she said that investments in the Pacific should be high quality. To me, that sounds like a dig at China. No, it isn't. It's not just uh, China. There are a lot of other players that have come into the region. I, I try to convey to some of our most powerful friends to say to them, when you see somebody who is drowning, you don't ask them what they need. You don't ask them what design boat they want. You help. And, and when you help, then you can talk about other matters. And so it's that kind of approach of better understanding the region. But at the heart of our decision making in the region is the Pacific Island Forum. That is the preeminent um, institutional infrastructure where our interests as a region must be discussed. And it, and it also enhances our strength of the region because the world looks to us as small island states. We, our rhetoric in the region is that we are a blue Pacific continent. We're the only oceanic continent in the world, one of the biggest. Right. Uh, Minister Peter William Seal, thank you very much for your time this morning.